Good morning. Your name? Former. Mr. Farmer, you were here in case number 19 CF 7055. You were arrested for possession of cocaine pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found. I didn't have any cocaine. I just had residue. No, Mr. Farmer, wait, wait, wait. Okay, please don't sorry, talk about the facts of your case, all right? Um, the warrant was pulled yesterday. Mr. Farmer, just please give me a minute and don't talk about the facts of your case. Okay. Yes, I recall this case. All right, Mr. Farmer, at this time, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. What did you say? I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. That means you don't have to pay any money to get out of the jail. You're going to get a piece of paper when they release you that tells you when your next court date is. You need to make sure you show up, otherwise they're going to issue a warrant for your arrest. Is the court case going to be here at the jail? No, nope, it'll be it? downtown. Your Honor, is downtown? Been appointed for this case? Yes. In the case somehow today, or do I have to go to the downtown one? Charges they're going to tell you when that next day is. It won't be today. But there'll be a date on there. You need to make sure that you go. So keep the piece of paper. Okay. Okay? Can I have the case number again, Your Honor? Sure. 19 CF 7055. Do you have any questions, Mr. Farmer? No. Do I get released today? You do. I do get released today? Cool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Tell me your name. Danielle Driver Vice. <coughs> Ma'am, you're here in case number 19MM4140. You were arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender. Um, state, is there an offer? Adjudication credit for time served. All right. Ma'am, did you want to accept that offer? Time served? Correct. So I can go? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. I need you to sign the plea form, please. Ma'am, did you sign the plea form before you signed it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, did you read the plea form before you signed it? No. No, okay. You need to read the plea form and then we'll, I'll finish <coughs> your plea. It was time served, right? For the paraphernalia? Correct. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, I know, but you signed this plea form and it has all the rights that you're gonna be giving up today when you enter the plea. So I need what you to read it. Okay. Okay, all right. So could we give her a copy of the plea form so she could read it? Yeah, I don't know. Correct. All right. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Diana Valadares. Good morning. Ma'am, this is case number 19MM4101. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. Um, I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Was there an offer for Ms. Valadares? Adjudication credit for time, sir, no return. Okay. Ma'am, did you want to accept that offer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I need you to sign the plea form, please. Your Honor, was the public defender appointed to this Yes. Case? She will take the offer. Okay. Thank you. 
Ma'am, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? The only question I have is that when they trespassed me, I was located on the sidewalk. Okay. And they said that I was trespassing, but I was in front of a store that would, I have a trespassing order against. Okay. So I don't know how to go about that situation. Just do not go back to the store. Correct. You can't Even on the sidewalk. Don't go to the Chevron. Even on the sidewalk. Just, correct. Just don't go there. And you'll be safe. Oh, how many? How long is it distance? I don't know, ma'am. I don't know what the trespass says. But if you don't go near the Chevron, you should be safe. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Ma'am, do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, Your Honor. Um, have, are you on probation? No. All right. Um, have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to accept your plea. I will adjudicate you guilty, uh, sentence you to Did they say adjudication four days. Of health? Four days in the Orange County Jail with credit for four days oh. time served. You're also going to have to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by May 20th of 2020. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Thank you. All Your right. Honor. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Your name? Benny Maxwell Edens, Jr. Mr. Edens, you're here in case number 19 CF 7076. You were arrested for grand theft, third degree. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your bond is $500, sir, and you're not to return to Dick's Sporting Goods. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, your name? Carl Wilson. Mr. Wilson, you are here in case number 19 CF 7088. You were arrested for tampering with physical evidence and possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. Count one, I'm gonna set your bond at $100 and count two, I'll set your bond at $100. Thank you, sir. That's correct. And I'm not going to take any action on 19 CF 5742. Are you all set? Did you read the plea form? Yes, best my knowledge. Okay. Do you have any questions about anything that's on the plea form? No. Okay. Are you on probation? No. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court this morning? No. All right, ma'am. I will accept your plea. I'll adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for three days time served. You also have to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by May 20th of 2020. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. All right, thank you. Good morning. Jim Gelati for Amber Garcia. Okay. This is case number 19 CF 5836. Ma'am, you were arrested for aggravated battery, a great bodily harm pursuant to a probable cause capius. Go ahead, sir. Your Honor, this is just a continuation of an MM case that was upgraded. I think she I would, the that. state concedes she's entitled to bond as a matter of right, so I just asked the court to set a reasonable bond with no contact, et cetera. Sure. Sorry, what was her last name again? Garcia. Garcia. Thank you. Was she already out on bond on the MM case? Yes, she's been out for about three and a half months with no issues. Oh, okay. Um, so then I'm sure there was already a no contact order in place, but again, I'll just reiterate that you're not to have any contact with Amanda Burgos. Yes, um, And I would 
also order that you're not to return to that McDonald's at 10026 Curry Ford Road, and I'll release you um, ROR at Thank this time. Thank you very time. much. Sure. David object to an ROR in our state would request a bond of some amount. Um, we'd also ask for no weapons as well, Your Honor. I will add the no weapons or firearms while out on bond, but I think ROR is appropriate at this Thank time. Thank you very much, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And then I have one more case, Your Honor. It's an ROR motion, but I don't know whether the state is prepared to address it yet. I, it's, um, it's on the ad on the docket, I believe. Okay. Mullen Door. Michelle. I did send an email to the ASA um, this morning, and I'm waiting on a response. I, in my email, I usually say until 945. The only thing I would add is that it has been more than 40 days. I'm not sure that it would make any difference unless an information was filed. Oh, it's a, I, okay. It's I a thought it was a, an actual like bond motion. It's no, just no, it's a 33 30, days. Yes, okay. Yes. Sorry, I didn't That's specify. okay. What's the name? Mullendore, Your Honor. M U L L, -L E N D O R E. Michelle, okay. first name. And let me look at the time. After 40 days, then it is a, it is a granny. Oh, Mullendore? Yes, ma'am. Is that right? Okay. It has been over the 40 days, Your Honor. Yeah, I don't see information that's been filed. No, there's no, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I, I sent the email to the ASA asking if they had made a charging decision, not. And you haven't received it. And I have not received, but it, it has been 51 days, Your Honor. Okay, I will grant the motion at thank this time. Thank you very much, Your Honor, I appreciate it. You're welcome. And I haven't seen you in a number of years, so congratulations. Oh, thank you very much, thank you. You're on the bench, thanks. Good morning, your name, sir? Christian Alvarez. Mr. Alvarez, you are here in 19 CF 7087. You were arrested for possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony, possession of cannabis with intent to distribute, possession of tetrahydro cannabis, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I will appoint the pu public defender, and I do find probable cause for the offenses, sir. Your bond on count one is $5,000. Your bond on counts two through five is 150, and your bond on count six is 100. Good morning, are you Mr. Bolden? Yes, Juwan this Bolden. This is case number 19 CF 2094. You failed to appear, sir, for pretrial conference on May 15th of this year. Your Honor? Yes? We've already been appointed to this case. We heard this case yesterday. Okay. Both, he was arrested on that warrant previously. I'm not sure why we're here again. Um, it sounds like, he, well, I look on the face sheet, it does, he's got 
three violations of a condition of pretrial release, and, and then this is a failure case. to appear capious. Right, but the capious he was arrested on okay. in the original instance just said arresting him for the warrant. I feel like we've already addressed this. He's already been given bonds. There was no new warrant filed between yesterday and today. The original warrant was for the failure to appear, which was a violation of his pretrial release. I'm looking in front of me at a capious, though, that was issued, and it's a no bond capious. So there may have been a violation of pretrial release conditions warrant that was signed that gave him a bond, but this is a capious that was issued. It says zero bond until defendant appears in Division 22. That's what we're here for today. It may be the same case number, but you can have a capious, and you can also have a violation of the pretrial release. So um, that's where we're at. The public defender's office is appointed, sir, and you'll have to see the judge in Division 22 to see about a bond. Thank so you. I have no bond? That's correct. But I had a bond yesterday, though. You'll have to on talk the same to judges. charge. I understand, sir. You're <clears> going to have to talk to And I to haven't had a new 22. warrant for failure to appear. It seems we failed to address this yesterday. Yeah. It probably should have been addressed yesterday. Unfortunately, it wasn't, sir. So I wasn't aware of this capious when I saw you, but there is a valid capious. Um, so when am I going to be able to talk to my attorney? You'll have to contact them and see when they can come visit you or do a chat. But you'll have to talk to the judge in Division 22 about your bond issue. What is Division 22? That's where, that's where your case is being heard. All right. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Melissa Cuddy. Ms. Cuddy, you are here in case number 19 CF 1223. You failed to appear. I thought court was next month. Okay. This month in May. Ma'am, sure. you're saying things on the record right now that we used yesterday. I understand, ma'am. Um, but you did fail to appear for case management conference on April 25th. Your bond is currently set at none. I'll appoint the public defender if they weren't previously appointed. Okay, thank, thank you, you ma'am. Good morning, sir. Your name? Matthew Harrell. Mr. Harrell, you're here in case number 18 CF 13795, 18 CF 5297, and 19MM 4176, where you were arrested for resisting officer without violence. I find probable cause for that offense, and I'll appoint the public defender. Your bond will be $500, and on the other cases, sir, where you failed to appear for your status hearings on May 10th. Your bond is currently set at none. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Ma'am, you're here in case number 19, CF 3284. You were arrested for petty theft with two prior convictions. I do find probable cause. You're not to return to the Denny's at 440 South Semeron Boulevard. I'll appoint the public defender. Your bond is $1,000. Good morning, sir. Your name? Nathaniel A. Luckett. Mr. Luckett, this is case number 19 CF 5195. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for the offenses of burglary of a dwelling, grand theft, third degree, dealing in stolen property, and receiving money from a pawnbroker by false verification. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir in that matter. Your bond on count one is $7,500. Your bond on count two is $1,500. Your bond on count three is $1,000. And your bond on count four is $150. You're also not to have any contact with the alleged victim or return to the home. You're also here in case number 19 CF 5834. 
where you were arrested pursuant to a warrant or probable cause was previously found for the offense of burglary of a dwelling and grand theft from a dwelling. Your bond in that matter is $2,500 on count one and $1,000 on count two. You're also not to have any contact with the alleged victim or return to the home. You also have case number 18 CF 17664 where you failed to appear for your pretrial conference on April 9th of 2019. Your bond is currently set at none in that matter. And you also have case number 19 CF 7080 where you were arrested for possession of methamphetamine and introducing contraband into a county facility. I find probable cause for that offense, sir, and your bond will be $1,000 on count one and $150 on count two. Lastly, you have 19 CF 7081, where you were arrested for possession of a concealed weapon or firearm by a convicted felon, possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, and resisting officer without violence. I find probable cause for each of those offenses, sir. Your bond on count one for that will be $150. Bond on count two will be $150. Your bond on count three will be $100. I believe that's everything. Thank you. Your Honor, is the public defender appointed to all cases? Yes. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Lakaya, ma'am. This is case number 19, CF 6511. You were arrested for burglary of a dwelling, grand theft, third degree, and criminal mischief. Pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found, I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your bond on count one is $5,000. Your bond on count two is $1,000. Your bond on count three is $1,000. You're not to have any contact. Um, with the alleged victim, Lawrence Humphrey, and you're not to return to 3301 Lewis Court. Thank you, ma'am. No, Good morning. Good morning. Your name? Emmanuel Matos. Mr. Matos, you are here in case number 19 CF 70. Eight, six. You were arrested for dealing in stolen property and grand theft, third degree. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your Honor, uh, it does seem there's a small mistake. Um, the statute they list for the dealing in stolen property lists the first degree felony statute, as in dealing in organized stolen property, and that would be 812.0192. I do have case law to that. He should be charged correctly under 812.0191. The F2? The F2 version. Say because no this, the allegation is he sold property that he uh, stole himself. That is the allegation in the police report, which would be an F2, not an F1. Agreed. State, you have no objection? No objection, Your Honor. Okay. So there's probable cause for dealing in stolen property. It'll be the F2, and it's just sub one it's instead of the sub two. That's the mistake there. Sir, your bond on count one is $1,500. Your bond on count two is $150. Okay. Thank you. Sir, just. Okay. Good morning. Your name? Del Risha McClendon. Ms. McClendon, you're here in 19 CF 6203. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for the offenses of grand theft, third degree, and conspiracy to commit grand theft. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. <coughs> Your bond on count one 
your bond on count one, ma'am, is going to be $1,000. Your bond on count two is 150. 19 CF 3692, I will take no action on that matter. She had not yet been arrested in this case, or in the other case, when the warrant was issued. Good morning, your name? Julio Morales. Sir, this is case number 19 CF 7029. You were arrested Pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for the offense of burglary of an occupied conveyance with a battery, battery and criminal mischief greater than 200 but less than 1,000. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. State, did you want to be heard with respect to bond on count one? Yes, Your Honor. State would ask that the defendant be held, request that the defendant be held at no bond. Looking at the four corners of the affidavit to issue warrant by sergeant i'm sorry christopher willis it looks like the defendant and a female companion were going she was going to drop her off at her home um the defendant walked up to the vehicle punched the victim through his through the window with a closed fist in his left eye the defendant then um, looks like punched out the back passenger i'm sorry driver's side window of the vehicle when law enforcement arrived they could see the left eye was bloody and swollen and that there was broken glass um, the victim identified this defendant based on numerous contacts. We believe the defendant should be held at no bond. Your Honor, if you are inclined to set a bond and use your discretion, we'd ask that the defendant be held at no less than a $25,000 bond, no contact with the victim, um, separate residences, no weapons or firearms. Sir Jordan, did you want to be heard? No, Your Honor, we defer to the court. Okay. At this time, I'm, and the information that's been um, before the court, I, the state is not their burden to establish that there is proof evident or presumption great. And at this time, sir, I will not exercise my discretion to set a monetary bond. So with respect to count one, your bond will be set at zero or none. Count two battery will be $500 and the criminal mischief will be $1,000. You're not to have any contact with Carlos Castro and you're not to possess any weapons or any firearms. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Andrea Preston. Mr. Preston, you were here in case number 19 CF 7083. You were arrested for grand theft, third degree of a motor vehicle. I do find probable cause for the offense. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you and your bond is $1,000, sir. Your Honor, I do have a small argument. This is the fact that the officer was unable to list his description in the police report leaving a blank as to his description. Also, the fact that the officer arrested the defendant here today outside of the vehicle and that the key to the vehicle was found on a different individual. I would, I would question whether there's probable cause to believe that he was involved in the grand theft of the, of the vehicle. I have a moment, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. that there's an inference that possession of recently stolen goods can be inferred that they are the ones that sold them. This defendant, I guess the theft happened on 516. They observe the defendant um, step out the passenger side, passenger of the, I'm sorry, driver's side of the vehicle on 516 the day after the um, car is stolen. Okay. This is Mr. Preston, correct? Yes. Okay. So the police officer watched him get out of the car and walk in the store, made contact with him in the store, and then the key fob was found in his pocket. So there's probable cause. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Mr. Ramos. Mr. Ramos, you are here in 19 CF 7082. You were arrested for possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir.
Your bond on count one is going to be $100. Your bond on count two is $100. Case number 19, CF 4302. Uh, I'm going to take no action on that matter at this time. Oh, yes. Can we resolve the open container today? Education of guilt, credit for time served. Mr. Ramos, did you want to enter a plea to the open container charge this morning? Your Honor, I've spoken with my client. He does not wish to take the offer today. No problem. So uh, I'm going to ROR him on the open container. Okay, so this is all together, though. Yeah, because I only see two counts. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good morning. Are you Mr. Abrams? How you doing? Sir, you were here for an out-of-county warrant from Polk County. To f you failed to appear for a driving while license suspended or revoked um, case. Your bond is set at none. Polk County will come pick you up, sir, and you'll see a judge when you get there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. Faza. Oh, okay. Ibrahim? Yeah. Okay. Sir, this is an out-of-county warrant from Indian River County. It's a violation of probation related to uttering forged bills. Your bond is currently set at none. And uh, Indian River County will come pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there. Yeah. All right, thank you. Good morning. Are you Ms. Wilson? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Wilson, you're here for an out-of-county warrant from Lake County. Yes, Your bond is currently set at none, and you will see a judge when you get to Lake County. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Are you Ms. Davis? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Davis, this is case number 19CF7009. You're here for... Uh, petty theft with two prior convictions. I do find uh, probable cause. Do you know when this took place? Because I've been incarcerated. Shh, just give me a second, okay? Yes, ma'am. This, I think, was an at-large case that was later filed on. Looks like this is from February 28th of 2018, and it's uh, regarding theft from the Dollar General Store on Semeron Boulevard. Okay. Okay. Um, did she qualify for PTR rather? No. Okay. Okay. Oh, she has a failure to appear. Okay, thank you. I got so many shifts. Okay. Ma'am, your bond is $1,000 at this time. Thank you. And there was no return until later? Yes, ma'am, you cannot return to 827 East Semron. That's the Dollar General.
How about Miss um, Johnson? True Nita? Also on the misdemeanor traffic. Really? Oh, just a separate case? I see. Okay. So then, can we just bring her over this afternoon? Okay. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Your name? Jawan Mills. This is 19MM3821. Go ahead, Mr. Jordan. Your Honor, evidence by the financial affidavit filled out by Mr. Mills. He is indigent and unable to afford his bond. Currently, he's being held on a $500 bond for a petty theft, nonviolent offense. Um, he has lived uh, in Florida his entire life. He has many years he spent in Orlando, Florida. Uh, when released from jail, he will be residing in Orlando, Florida. Um, while he does also have family members here, we, we see no reason as to uh, keep him simply based on a $500 uh, bond, and we're asking for ROR. State, what's your position? No objection, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Mills, I will grant your motion. Um, please make sure that you keep your address updated with your attorney in the clerk's office so you get notice of your court dates. Otherwise, they'll issue a warrant for your arrest if you fail to appear, sir. We'd ask yes, still no. for a no return, Your Honor. Yes, I don't. <laughs> sir, you cannot return to the alleged, the scene of the alleged offense. Do you understand? Yes, you know where that is? Colonial, um, you know, uh, Republic, sorry. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. God bless. Have a blessed day. Your Honor, if we could address Sylvester Blue from yesterday. Sure, just one second. Mr. Blue's case. Yes, Your Honor. Have you gotten a copy of that motion, the revised order? I don't. All right. I believe one was emailed out. I have a copy here for the court. Sure. May I approach? Of course. Thank you. Your Honor, your submissions were correct yesterday. Um, the city was requesting previously that he be court ordered to go to Aspire, be transported. That is not legally allowed. Okay. And as such, we are asking for the original conditions of his release that were in the previous case that he, that he had, uh, conditions of release based on his incompetency to proceed. Okay. State? I will say I'm going to read the email that I received. Um, that there is no agreement based on the conversations that Mr. McGee from the city had with Mr. <coughs> Augusto, the original PD on it. Um, he says his concern um, is that he, that for him to reside with, I guess, at the address, whoever's family member that is. His criminal history includes um, a number of felonies. Um, he has, based on the opinions of two psychiatrists given with this year, he would meet the criteria for involuntary commitment according to Dr. Tate's 12619 recommendation mm -hmm. that he be ordered to Baker Act to a Baker Act facility for inpatient treatment. So at this point, on behalf of the city, we would object. Okay. That's just the email received at 3:30 yesterday. Sure. Thank you. It seems that the agreement they tried to reach where he would be committed was not legal as per yet. It may turn out that they do involuntarily commit him, but as of right now, he does not qualify for that. Well, right. I mean, they can't involuntarily commit him on a misdemeanor 
related to the crime. He would have to qualify for a Baker Act in terms of him being a danger to himself or the community as he's presenting at the time. Correct. It right. would be separate from this. And in this case, because he is incompetent to proceed and given the length of time it has gone between discussions of the defense with the city and the city, I mean, I guess the city's demands have been unreasonable according to the law. We would be asking for him to be released on his original conditions approved of by the other judge in his other case where he is also ruled incompetent to proceed. The motion and order does include case uh, statute and law to show that the city's demands were um, illegal. Mental health. Okay, we'll reset his case then. Good afternoon. Are you Mr. Birch? Yes, ma'am. Sir, this is case number 19 CF 7089 and 19 MO 952. You arrested for possession of methamphetamine and open container. I find probable cause for both of those offenses. I will appoint the public defender's office to uh, represent you. Was there an offer on 19 MO 952? Adjudication credit for time served. Okay. Sir, did you want to accept that offer this afternoon? Excuse me? To resolve the open container case, would you like to accept the state's offer of an adjudication of guilt and credit for time served? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I need you to sign the plea form, please. Uh, is the public defender appointed in this case? Correct. Your Honor, after speaking with my client, uh, I, he will not be taking the offer. Okay. All right, Mr. Birch, at this time I'm going to release you on your own recognizance on both cases. You're going to get a court date when you're released from the jail. You need to make sure that you show up to court, otherwise they're going to issue a warrant for your arrest, sir. Okay, ma'am. Um, can if I may, can you send um, this paperwork or whatever it is to the closest post office around here? I'm, or actually, there's a homeless shelter that I'm staying Wait, at. Mr. Birch, 
what you can do is you need to go down to the courthouse um, and you need to update your address with the clerk of the court and to the public defender's office. And I believe you can get a general delivery address. Okay. And that will be the downtown post office. Okay. okay. Like I was saying, man, I was... I know, I'm just, I'm sorry. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Greetings. Good afternoon. Your name? Uh, Zachary M. DeMarco. Mr. DeMarco, this is case number 19 CF 7100. You were arrested for fleeing and eluding as well as possession of cocaine. I do find probable cause for the offenses. Sir, were you going to hire your own attorney or do you want to see if you qualify for the public defender? I probably should uh, see if I can qualify. Okay. Do you, are you working? Uh, I work as much as possible. Okay. So, yes. Okay. How much money do you make every two weeks after taxes? Oh, yeah, I don't even do my own taxes, so I have no idea. Okay. Well, do you get a paycheck? Well, it varies from week to week. Okay. Well, it, it's, how uh, much is it? Temp jobs. So, I can make like maybe like 250 in a week. So based upon your testimony, I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Right. Um, your bond on count one will be $2,500, and your bond on count two will be $150. Your Honor, I believe these are two different. It's on, I, I agree with the bonds. I would simply ask that they note that they are two different cases. Well, right. I understand. They just put them on separate affidavits. It's the same incident, though. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Twenty-five hundred. It was twenty-five hundred and two fifty. One fifty. One fifty. No, on the on the fleeing, the twenty-five hundred on the fleeing, and then one fifty on the cocaine. Good afternoon. Are you Mr. Griffin? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Mr. Griffin, you're here in case number 19 CF 7095. You were arrested for burglary of a structure, grand theft, third degree, criminal mischief, and resisting officer without violence. I do find probable cause for those offenses. Uh, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is 3,500. Your bond on count two is 150. Your bond on count three is 100. Your bond on count four is 100. And at this time, I'm going to revoke your bond in 19 CF 5254, and that will be set at none. Can you ask for a no contact and no return, Your Honor? Sir, you cannot return to the uh, Pine Lock Elementary School, 3101 Woods Avenue. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Hill. Good afternoon. Mr. Hill, you are here in case number 19 CF 7096 and 19 MO 953. You were arrested for possession of ecstasy and being in the park after hours. I find probable cause for both offenses. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Is there an offer on the MO case? Adjudication credit for time served. Sir, did you want to accept that offer today? For which one? For the being in the park after dark. I okay, can't. Yeah, I'll take that one. Okay. He could have had you on contesting this time. Okay, no. I won't. So just give me one chance. Yeah, I, I won't. Because I'm going to test the methamphetamine charge. Okay. All right, sir. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance at this time as to both cases. Mr. Hill, make sure your attorneys know how to give you notice of your court date. You're also going to get a court date when you leave the jail. Make sure you keep that and you show up to your court date. Otherwise, you'll get arrested, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Your Honor, Justin Noon Chester refused. Okay. We'll reset Mr. Noon Chester. Uh, Matthew Reynolds refused as well. All right, we'll reset Mr. Reynolds for tomorrow. You miss Roman? Scorchado. Okay. You don't have Roman? Milagros, uh, Delco, maybe um, Bonded? Next. No, I have Milagros next. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. Um, tell me your name, ma'am. Cynthia Gorchado Villanueva. I don't have. This is a misdemeanor non pleable. 2019 MM 643. Failure to appear. Failure to appear for a petty theft pretrial conference. Thank you. Thank you. Just make sure I didn't, oops, make that I didn't. Is it? Let me just double check one more time. We have it. Ma'am, you are here. Thank you, Robin. You are here in 19MM643. You failed to appear for pretrial conference on May 9th of this year um, for the charge of petty theft. Your bond is $1,000. Could she resolve her case today, State? No. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Your name? Roman, uh, Milagros Roman. Ma'am, you are here for the offense of driving under the influence in 19 CT 3749. I do find probable cause and will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Did she qualify for PTR, yes. Robin? Okay. I'm going to order pretrial release at this time, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, your name? Hello, um, Hasiva Lopez. Ms. Lopez, you were here in case number 19MM4194. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. I find probable cause. State, is there an offer for Ms. Lopez? With all credit time served, okay. no return. All right. Ms. Lopez, did you want to accept that offer from the state? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. It's a, an adjudication of guilt. Did you say adjudication? Withhold. Oh, a withhold. I'm sorry. A withhold of adjudication and credit for time served. I don't know what that means. Uh, your Honor, is the public defender appointed? She actually, ma'am, you didn't fill out the affidavit. Did you want to um, see if you qualify for the office of the public defender to represent you? I do have a lawyer. Who's your lawyer? Uh, his name is Joe Leppard. Isn't he a public defender? No. He's a former public defender. Okay. Um, Mr. Jordan, as a friend of the court, would you explain to her what that means?
Your Honor, um, after speaking with my client, she's not going to take the offer. Okay. Um, Ms. Lopez, your bond in that case is $500. I'm not going to take any action on 19 CF 1953. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you didn't understand the scope of the trespass, but I want to be very clear that um, you are not allowed back at the Blue Martini. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Sam Russell. Mr. Russell, you are here in case number 19MM4193. You were arrested for resisting officer without violence. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. Russell? Adjudication three days. How many days does he have credit for? One. I believe that he would be out tomorrow. When was he arrested? Yes. Tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, so you'd be out tomorrow. Okay. Your Honor, after talking with my client, he does wish to take the offer. Okay, we'll just need the plea form, please. Could we uh, call this at the end? Sure. I think he needs a chance to read his brief. Yeah, oh, that's right, no right, problem. Right, right, right. Take your time, this Mr. Russell. Right here. Have you read this? Mm -hmm. Oh, he has read the, his copy, so. Oh, okay. Mr. Russell, um, I believe you just told me you did read the plea form while you were waiting in the back. Is that right? Yes. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Is that yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? Sir, I'll accept your plea. I'll adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for one day time served. You'll also have to pay court costs. Those are due by May 20th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Your name? Blaine Horace Bartley. I have forgotten to show up in court and stuff like that. I own a trespass or just a trespass. I forgot well, to show up in see. court. I'm I want to. Sure. I have forgot to show up in court. That's that's right, sir. This is an out of county warrant from Osceola County. You failed to appear on a trespass charge. Your bond is two hundred fifty dollars. If you cannot, um, oh, and you also have another case where you. It's another trespass. You have two cases out of Osceola County. Is this a trespass? County. A trespass? I forgot to show up in court and stuff. Right. So your bond total is 500. If you can't post the bond, Osceola will come pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there, sir, okay? Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Oh. Good afternoon, ma'am, your name? McKenna Henderson. 
Miss Henderson. You are here for an out of, um, out of county warrant, Lake County. You, um, for an unlawful possession of a personal ID. It's a violation of probation, ma'am. Your bond is currently set at none. Lake County will come and pick you up and you will see a judge when you get there, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, your name? Carlos J. Rosado Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez, this is an out of county warrant from Polk County, violation of probation on uttering a forged instrument in grand theft. Your bond is set at none, um, and Lake County will come pick you up. You'll see a judge when you get there, sir. All right, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Mr. Dean? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dean, did I just see you? Yes, ma'am. The okay. same officers. All right. I thought I did. Okay. I thought I did. All right, Mr. Dean, you're here in 19 MO 955. You're here for an open container. Yes, ma'am. I do find probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender. Is there an offer for Mr. Dean? Adjudication credit for time served. Mr. Dean, would you want to accept the offer? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dean, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Um, and you're not on probation? No, ma'am. And you understand if you uh, are not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. All right, sir, so I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to one day in the Orange County Jail with credit for one day time served. You do have to pay court costs. Those are due by May 20th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court writing, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, Mr. Dean. Right. Good afternoon. Are you Mr. Figueroa? Yes, ma'am. Sir, this is case number 19MO956. You were arrested for being in the park after dark, open container, and possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. Figueroa? Adjudication credit for time served. Did you want to accept that offer, Mr. Figueroa? Yes. Mr. Figueroa, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? Nope. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, I okay. Sir, I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to one day in the Orange County Jail with credit for one day time served. You'll have to pay court costs. Those are due by May 20th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. All right, thank you, Mr. Figueroa. Go ahead and reset, 
Mr. McKenzie. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Okaddy, Okaddy. Sir, you're here in 19 CF 7057. You were arrested for grand theft, third degree, possession of a forged driver's license, uh, two counts in obtaining property by false uh, impersonation and displaying an identification card of another. There is probable cause for those offenses, and I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. And at this time, I'm going to stay the bonds on all counts, $2,500 at count one, $150 for counts two through five. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is case number 19 CF 6922. Miss Johnson was arrested for petty theft with two prior convictions. I do find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender and her bond is $1,000. Um, I believe that's everything, yes? All right. Uh, blue, I believe. Oh yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Jordan. Um, so at this time, he's actually going to be screened for the Baker Act. He did not, he's not going to qualify for mental health PTR. Mm -hmm. So he will be screened for the Baker Act, I believe, over the weekend, Robin. Possibly Monday. OK, or, or Monday. And then once that's done, I will enter the order. Okay. OK. I just think that's the most appropriate thing to do based on what the evaluations say. It completely, if he is Baker Acted, that has nothing to do with his criminal cases. Okay. And but I, if he if he doesn't meet the criteria, then I will sign the <coughs> after the evaluation. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, we'll be in recess.